Welcome to a super cool episode of Primetime Muscle. <laughs> That's right, Chris. We all adopted your now, cool. Now, Tim Wilkins, Derek Elgandy. swag. And we've all swagged swag. out like Chris Cormier. Pretty boy, swag. Let's see you get it. Get it, Tim. I see you, baby. I see you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we've obviously been in your luggage, because I don't yeah. own anything this nice. <laughs> This, That's again, not right. this is a car payment on you my face. Good. <laughs> I feel ready to commit a felony with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> let's steal some hearts with this one, fellas. Uh, we, we had a, So you and I talked about this because we each had our own experience. Uh, one of my favorite divisions for years, back to the days of Monica Brandt, Jennifer Hendershot, Adela Gar- uh, Garcia Friedmansky. Uh, she's back to Garcia. I don't know. Probably have to cut that off the free mind ski right Adela off. Garcia. Or Adela Garcia. Adela Garcia. No, don't um, cut. Don't cut. Don't cut. <laughs> don't cut, don't, Nico. Don't Je- cut. Jenny Worth. Uh, so many great champions in fitness over the years. Uh, Oksana Grish- Grishina, uh, you know, Whitney Jones. This year, Missy Truscott. We, we made our predictions, fellas. Tim, this I've been waiting. You, you, I have been you waiting live for this garbage. For I love this it. Freaking moment, <laughs> the whole time. Chris Cormier looked at the camera and he said, "America, <laughs> Ariel Kadar, who everybody loves, is going to win the Olympia." And when Missy Truscott came off the stage, she looked into Chris Cormier's eyes and said, you're going to eat your words at prime time muscle. Now be a man. Well, look at that camera and apologize from the bottom of your freaking heart. Let me pile on, El Kindy. Let me, let me pile on. So my wife and I, my wife and I are let walking. The, pile on. We're, white, we're walking right. the expo and we're saying hi to uh, Mike O'Hearn and Clark Bart and people I haven't seen in years. And this little blonde hand reaches over the crowd and grabs me and spins me around and goes, hey, Missy, don't missy me. You tell that Chris Cormier <laughs> don't to miss eat me. his damn words. We need a close-up. It has to be more than that. We need a close-up. Get closer to him. Okay, can we get closer to there, him? Th- can he stand up and looking at the camera? That, that's you right there. There's, go, your, go, there's go. your ISO slick. Oh, wow, coming around front. Come no around less. and apologize to Missy wow, Truscott. You're going to be out of your good lighting. And here's Chris Jackass Cormier apologizing <laughs> to you. Missy Truscott. Oh, miss. I was wrong. I was wrong about you. I didn't give you your due. I thought you wasn't going to take it. I didn't think you were going to bring your second championship home. I'm sorry. These guys made me a fool. You made me a fool. And uh, I'm a fool. I'm sorry. Oh, man, okay, that was that was that, heartfelt. That was really good. You know what? It, you know what it felt like? Because it was it was it was meant. It felt like the confession at the end of an episode of Cheaters. Oh my God! Yeah, I was, was impressed. Was, I didn't know he. Had, I'm sorry. Uh, that was very heartfelt, Chris. I'm sorry. I, I think Missy is going to be happy with this apology. <laughs> All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to see how she won that championship and got her title back. And it's always a very how that happened. Well, uh, well, well, let's look. It's um, very simple. <laughs> Chris, she won the Olympia in 2020. Yeah. Okay. And, and the girl who beat her, E. Jones, was not there. Ah. Oh. Well, and Oksana had to bow out with her ankle injury. Well, let me tell you, the backstage the was not the biggest, and she had the shark backstage. Ah, uh, see. Oh, I boy. Didn't, I didn't know she was going to come I out. I had some bodybuilders that wanted to eat thinking it's I tilapia. <laughs> I didn't know she was going to come out with the shark and then kept the face on. I didn't know that. You didn't tell me that. I think it scared Chickarillo a little bit. Here, here she comes with the face. Look at that. Just jumping around. Like a boss. But here's what's always, here's what's always impressed me about this division. And she personifies ah, this. Dang. To be able to do this, this conditioned, with this amount of muscularity, with this amount of leanness, has always impressed me. Her physique on her physique is in parallel. It might be the best physique. Now, one thing about Missy Truscott and Whitney Jones and Oksana have that, and Ariel has joined, is the complete energy. Look at that. Look at the strength. I mean, you look at that. Now, she does not miss one transition. And let me mention second place, Jacqueline Baker. She was awesome, and she goes, 
you guys, jackasses, better start talking about me on Primetime Muscle. And Jacqueline Baker, we're going to talk about you. But Missy does not miss one single transition. Is energy from the beginning to the end. She's a phenomenal athlete. Right. And Damn. she brings the house down. Damn. No. Hey, whoa. I was lucky to have... Uh, See, I didn't know she was bringing all that. I mean, what did you think she was going to bring? Well, she stayed in character also. I like that. Staying in character the full the full time out there. I love the, I the, I the mask. Bringing. I'm not quite sure about that big fish that we had to carry backstage, <laughs> but I love the mask. And she looked like she's capable of carrying her own fish. Yeah. Thank you. Damn, so damn. That's I was dangerous. lucky to... I had Whitney Jones and Rayal Graber on, uh, on the, oh, look at those guns, on the uh, pay-per-view uh, broadcast. Uh, and they kept talking about athlete after athlete and the, the, the challenge I, is keeping up the energy throughout the entire routine. I think her, she just wanted to prove me wrong so much that she just nailed everything. So I had a lot to do with that win, too. Jacqueline Baker's performance, she took second, and she was incredible. And her posing routine was different than... Uh, Missy, she was emotional, she had everything. But there was a small little second where the transition did not connect perfect for Jacqueline. In this presentation for Missy Truscott is energy from the beginning to the end. There's no loss of balance. It's all the transitions are connected with energy. And that's very hard to do, to jump around like crazy and come to the next step and keep that momentum. That's Missy Truscott's signature on stage. She will never miss a transition. It will be energy from the beginning to the end. I want to mention Jacqueline Baker because, man, she's here to make an impact and she can challenge Missy for years to come. Okay, there's a couple moves coming up. If we're going to get to these strength moves and see how she holds for a while. Look, okay, the delts in this are so impressive. The physicality, the, the uh, arms, but we're going to come into these strength moves. Holding this, that's hard enough, but bringing this down this slowly. Right. This slowly, holding it right there at the half, uh, half handstand. Down. <clears throat> And all the work she put in in her physique, you I mean that's that's remarkable in itself. So, and this is one of those things when you watch the young guns coming up in the world of fitness, they just aren't ready to do this yet. This is next next level. Now, there. Let's go back where she turns her leg. Okay, she's here and look. Damn. So this 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 is a competitor. This is a competitor that practiced this for months. While she was doing in the beginning of her training, she's probably looking down you know, breathing like crazy. And then her trainer or herself working in the mirror and say, you still have to stay in character. Turn to the audience. So let's increase the difficulty on this. A lot of the competitors, they do this. But Missy goes one step behind and she just creates a little angle here, which I personally had not seen before. So all this, and then you look at the muscular physique, right? This is a beautiful statue and she's still in character. This is why she is the champion. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome, Missy. So uh, as we roll this through a little bit more, there's a couple more moves in here. The flexibility, all these things that go in. Now, Tarek, what are a couple of these um, more inc incredible gymnastics? What are a couple of these mandatories that she just nails? That, that one arm push up. And at some point, at some point during the routine, they're gonna have to go from one side to the stage to the next side of the stage, doing all kinds of flips. What we're looking at, it's not only the flips, but it's how they fall and keep the momentum. If you do all those flips and all those turns and you fall and you lose a little bit of your balance and it takes you a split second to recover, your presentation is no longer perfect. This is something that Missy, Whitney Jones, they're experts. You know, and God bless their knees. I don't know what's going on with their knees, but they're capable of handling the, handling the impact and continue to go. This is so hard, Tim. These are phenomenal competitors. It's really impressive. So you've got the top five. So uh, Oksana will be healed up enough. She's going to the Fitness International at the Arnold Classic. Um, you've got uh, Whitney, hopefully, will be back for this year's competition phase. So we'll go back to having three Olympians duking it out this year coming up. And then Ariel is already qualified, so we don't know if she'll have to uh, get out there in the circuit and pound herself uh, with her knees and, and potential shoulder injuries. I don't know if Ariel Kadar was 100% at this Olympia. 
Still and again, took, still took third. We we and she's incredible, Ariel Kadar. You know, energy. She is probably unmatched. But Tim, we you are conditioned. You build muscle. You got to maintain your flexibility, and then you got to do all these jumps. We have great categories in our sport, but the superheroes are the fitness competitors. So I don't know if you could deal with this. We were talking about to Andrew Jack in a previous episode and him going into the splits. My wife teases me that I'm getting ready for a physique competition and it's all for show, not for go. There's no athleticism. I blow up my back putting on a sock. Uh, you know, reached out to grab the dog's leash and I'm down for two days. These girls are flipping around. You got someone like Mina Pujolati who carries so much mass. She's somewhere between figure and women's physique and she's so incredibly athletic. Tim, we are all mega stars on our Instagram. The fitness girls are mega stars in real life. That's the bottom line. True story. Well, uh, hopefully, Missy, uh, Chris, uh, you felt it. You felt the contrition. You felt the, the remorse. <laughs> uh, I see it. It's real. I, I was wrong. You were wrong. Uh, For the first time. <laughs> we're only wrong so often, and, and when we are, we're welcome to eat some crow. Because uh, it's better than tilapia after you've been dieting for 12 weeks. Uh, we've got more primetime muscle coming up when we come back right after this. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. And we're back, and uh, this is a segment we uh, love to do. It's uh, reading your viewer comments, and we do love when you uh, like, subscribe, share, and especially comment. And uh, we, we've got a few nice ones, which we always appreciate. We had an episode uh, a while back with the one and only Steve Weinberger on, and people really appreciated his, uh, his insights. A lot of compliments. Here's the bottom line. This is the best show in bodybuilding. You have a judge, you have a competitor, you have a legend, you have a master of ceremony, you have people with credibility, and we try to make it fun, and we try to make it entertaining. This is, just the facts, the best show in bodybuilding. I, I like when a person defines their own credibility. Let's get to it. Uh, Noah the Fox, uh, I love that there's a sh bodybuilding show with sports center type quality and coverage. Keep growing this. Thank you, Noah. I have one from Turbo 162005 1234. <laughs> <laughs> That's his handle. Oh my I mean, God. The, high, the high school Palm Spring education coming through. <laughs> Chris, Chris is the goat. <clears throat> Laugh out loud. <laughs> that these damn physique guys jumping around, jumping every other second, looking like. Selection of a, of a of a character menu. Hit the damn pose and stop effing around and move. Okay, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you for your uh, English contributions. <laughs> okay, here's Dennis Mitta. No idea who started it, but we're all ready, or we're all really glad to see Olympia officials doing some really high quality discussions and breakdowns. Tarek, you're the man. Thank you, great effort this year on connecting the IFBB Pro League to the athletes in terms of media. We are here to show you guys transparent why this guy won, the reason why he won, and as judges, we want you guys to know we are here to show pure transparency. Uh, transparency. I love I love how you guys cherry pick your own compliments. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the show. As a fan and competitive bodybuilder, I do enjoy it a lot. Thank you, Vladimir Markov, uh, for, for watching the show and sending this nice comment. And keep watching. Raymond Jones. Great interview. I like the upgraded camera they had on Chris. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice to see Chris in a tie from Peter Roberts. Nice to see Chris in a tie. He looks good. Thank you. <laughs> see? Uh, you see me too? <laughs> <laughs> This, this was probably our best episode because I'm trying to find something negative about Chris and I can't. You're working hard though, aren't you? Chris, this is what, this is what, 
Seren Daniel said, Chris is chilling. <laughs> I like the oh wow the whole episode laugh out loud well we thank you as always for liking sharing subscribing and, and especially commenting uh, so, so thank you for that but uh, now, now diving back into uh, someone that at the, uh, one of the well, there's a few different spots if you go to an Olympia that are irreplaceable that you're not going to get on the pay per view uh, the press conference is one of my favorites well, another one of my favorites is meet the Olympians and this competitor had a line around the block, probably the single leg longest line by two or three times, Francieli Matos. Every woman in the world wants to have her butt. That's the, that's the bottom line. Women are not shy about it. They look at her hair, her makeup, her butt, how she poses, and they want to be like her. That's a fact. If you look at her posing, if you look at what she does on stage, and the glute development, when I say glute development, glute development, Francieli Matos is at the gym developing the muscle tissue, eating protein, having the reconstruction, okay? She's not having imbalances. Right. Imbalances. Well, you have to be slightly right. imbalanced for wellness anyway, though, top to bottom. It's not like there's a symmetry well, of shoulders to... But we don't want the Kim the Kardashian <laughs> imbalances. That's right. And it's 100% real muscle tissue, and I like that. Uh, she is hard, hardcore boutte. 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 Technical term. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, let's. Don't have to call HR on me. Let's, uh, <laughs> as they say on South Park, let's get it, Boutte. <laughs> to Boutte. So here's the beautiful. And the uh, wheels. Here's our two time Olympia wellness champion. Hey, stop right here, Aaron. Same thing, same thing. The, the wellness girls are a little bit more, a little bit friskier than the bikini girls. And, but you can see that Franciali Matos' walk is not as crazy as some people. It's just a regular walk. They touch their hair a little bit more than the bikini girls, which I advise them to be very cautious with that. But Franciali Matos, her walk brings a little bit of that simplicity that we saw with Maureen Blanquisco. Let's watch some more walk. Kick it back a notch. There we go, right there. But the arms are subtle. I mean, as, as wide as that was. Okay, stop closer. right here. So sorry, Tim. I want you, competitor, that keeps emailing me, should have been harder, should have been leaner, should I come in with 17 veins on my forehead? <laughs> no! No, you don't! I don't need it. You don't need 74 <laughs> veins. You don't need to be harder. Talk to me and let me know that you're seeing cross striations, you're seeing vein, deep separation. You know, relax, people, relax. Yes, yeah, it's, it's only a competition. It's not like try to go to the extreme. It's not like extreme competition. It's not MMA or anything like that. So you see the physique. I mean, she's been working on the physique. You see she has all the body parts in place. She is the best in the world at this time. But there has to be, so to really define again for us as we talk about the gold standard, the one that you're building the judging on for the rest of the year, top to bottom, and we're going to get her to do that turn to the side, which she'll do here shortly, and show us, you know, the imbalance from top to bottom. Well, boom. Boom. I see you. There it is right there. Ah, right there. That's the, that's okay. the shot. So the lower half is more developed than the upper half. Now, there's two factors for this. Women by nature, because they, they are made to give birth, they tend to carry more body fat on their hips. That's why you see a girl with jeans, you know, their butts are bigger than ours. That's just... Um, He's pushing some limits in today's society. I don't even know if you can say that. Women, women give birth? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. <laughs> All right. So, I'm going to go with that. Do I'm not you cancel that. me. Do not cancel me. But that's what I learned in school, that women are the ones that give birth. Or whoever identifies as women. You got to say that. She has two kids. You gotta she has that. two she kids. She has given birth. So my assumption is that she's given birth to yeah. two kids yeah. so they accumulate more body fat in this region right so when you actually work out the legs and the glutes because you already have that natural body fat that your body accumulates more than usual it becomes you know quite voluptuous so the wellness division the wellness division was created 
to um, accommodate a certain type of women genetic that's very common. It's the girls that have the legs and the glutes, their bodies are formed this way, and we don't want them to you know, burn all that muscle to be in bikini. The bikini girls, are they tend to be a little bit more petite, and here Franciele Matos is one of those. She's a mother, she's a wife, she carries a little bit more muscle and body fat here, and that imbalance is perfectly fine. I'm hoping in this generation we don't have a men's division like this where the testosterone has spilled over without an estrogen blocker and you got a lot of hips and booty going on. So let's keep this going just to touch more on her individual. And you see, I love the side pose. I love the walk. Okay, okay. I'm so sorry. I'm passionate about it. Go back here, Aaron. Go back a little bit on the side pose, okay? Go back. You, okay, so nice. if, you're, if you're glute, America, and world. If your glute, world, Brazil, if your glute starts here and goes all the way here, <laughs> let's put Chris Cormier's head right here, okay? If your glute starts here and goes all the way here, we're gonna call that an imbalance, okay? He just made you butt That's head. gonna be an imbalance. There is a natural progression of the glute and the indention which leads to the hamstring, okay? If you have just a plain separation here, which takes away the natural indention, we've seen this with bodybuilders, female bodybuilders, there's a natural indention. You develop the glutes, but it's still, they connect naturally to the hamstring. String. Do not come in with this crazy imbalance because that is imbalancing your physique. And talk about come in. Girls, work on the legs before you go up there so we're not looking at, you know, like an, an overweight bikini competitor. You have to build big quads, big glutes. Take the time and do so. Then get in the show. Yeah, I mean, I understand you want to compete, but finish the product and then let's see some quads and let's see some hamstrings and let's see some real good glutes. And we talk about this problem with some of the men's competitors in different ways, trying to cut corners and speed the process up. Yeah, don't, don't be cut corners. If you cut corners and go it any kind of time. glute implant, which when you lean up, it gets more obvious that it's not yours. And it gets more obvious there's not striations or cuts or separation. Do the work. Tim, I don't know if it's an implant. I don't know if it's an injection. I don't know. All I can do is judge what I see. And if we see some imbalances, you are not going to be placing very high. Let's see somebody who doesn't have any imbalances on their back post. Well, let's, let's finish up her routine. We'll finish up this segment. Let's enjoy it, this routine, shall we? It is so beautiful and so subtle. There's such a subtlety. Nice the move of the hair. Okay, okay stop right nice here. Turn. Natural indention of the glutes leading in to the hamstrings. This is natural. And this bad. is not female or male. Every bodybuilder from Chris Cormier, 1993, USA's, to Larry Scott, 1965, Francielli Matos, 2022, this is a natural indention of the glute going into the hamstring. If this does not happen, that's an imbalance. All right. You heard it first. You, you heard it there. All right. Uh, <laughs> wellness competitors and ones that want to cross over from uh, bikini or figure or just coming into this sport, that's your gold standard right there. That's your, uh, that's your way to shape your body for the future. Uh, we'll be back with more Prime Time Muscle right after this. It was a great Olympia in a new venue back to Las Vegas. Uh, guys, there was a whole lot of thoughts. Everybody's got an opinion. And we, you know, there's a lot of uh, phrases that say what opinions are like. But let's talk about the real experience of being at the Zappos, being at Planet Hollywood, and, and, and kind of walk through the weekend. I mean, there was a lot of competitors. I mean, that's one thing that stood out to me. 
way more competitors than than ever before. Uh, we we we've all talked about that a lot. Um, you know, going from you know just things you could do better in the future, as opposed to you know experiencing you know uh, so many more people to deal with. That's that's something that we got to take in consideration. Well, just on the Zappos Theater itself, we had a, a 7,500 seat sold out to the rafters, uh, which was awesome. But I had friends in different parts of the Zappos, and every one of them said it was a beautiful place to watch a show. Record number of pay per view, incredible venue, incredible event, and uh, Las Vegas. Remember, Tim, for the longest time, we were listening to a lot of people tell us, well, we're not on the strip. We're not on the strip. Now you are on the strip. People could cross the street, go to restaurants. The hotel was very nice. The Zappos vision. I heard so many people saying I had the best seat in the house. Let's talk about some of the negatives. Somebody said, hey, the backstage was too small. They are right. The backstage was a bit small. Tarek, was the backstage too small or is it the fact that it was yep. a little smaller with more competitors well, than any time and in history. Let's, let's address that. We're not going to back down. The backstage could have been bigger. And here's what happened. You have a number of competitors, 400. So at this point, you have to move the back walls a little bit back, right? People don't know all the technicality that happens. They just go on the internet, all oh, these start, trolls. Start chirping. They, they, they just go there, start typing. They have all the porn subscriptions and then they go, I'm tired, let me just write something negative here. <laughs> the back wall needs to go a little bit further once you have a lot of competitors. Competitors. That's a technical decision that anybody with the right mind will say. And that limited a little bit of the place um, for the backstage. So you're saying the stage, they gave too much room for the, for the competitors? Because of the number of competitors. Yes. Now, a lot of competitors, they came up to me and they said, hey, when do I come back? And I told them, hey, you come back in about two hours. Do I think that maybe with the timing we can get better Absolutely. Do I think the backstage could have been better? Absolutely. But the reality is, it was a fantastic show that accommodated 400 competitors on the Las Vegas Strip with record number pay-per-view, record number ticket sale, and people loved their seats watching the show. And a lot of people are talking about how late the show was. Can you talk about that? Well, yes. You have to take in consideration a few things. Some people go, well, put the bodybuilding at 1 p.m. so everybody can watch. You know, I've promoted over 100 shows, okay? In the amateur ranks, the most popular classes are bikini. They're bikini and men's physique. You usually put the bikini last. Why? Why? Because you want most of the audience to stay. That helps your sponsors. That helps everybody, okay? So you put the bodybuilding first. And everybody's talking about, well, the bodybuilding is the priority. It is the priority, jackass. It is the priority. And that's why we put last, so we can get all the traffic throughout the day watching and waiting for the bodybuilding. For you, jackass that never wrote a check. You just wrote the back of a check. You never promoted. You need to know these things. You keep the best for last. So it carries over all those people to watch. So then once the bodybuilding comes in, just like the UFC, you don't have the Conor McGregor fighting in the beginning so that somebody on the other side of the world can watch. You save it for last so everybody waits for that. And, well, And also, uh, I've competed um, compete in most shows like around the world. Sometimes we are jet lagged. Sometimes not perfect conditions. Sometimes we got to go out there without a pump, without oil. We've done all these things, and we wasn't complaining that oh we all we all start and finish the same time. So we all going through the same thing. The person who is more mentally uh, uh, strong to handle these things. They're probably, probably going to prevail, but we didn't always have perfect conditions. We had, we were late on a plane. We were uh, going to another country to compete. We also, uh, we came. One second, buddy. Uh, we also. <laughs> was, well, I'm deferring back to you. <laughs> yeah. So what I was saying, like, it was never always perfect. But I mean, be prepared. Have enough food when you go backstage. Everyone's professional here, so have enough food. Be ready for anything. 
and everything and be mentally ready to take on the best in the world. But you've said this on an episode and with us working out and hanging out that the, the thing it is, you can complain all you want, but everybody in each division was equally advantaged or disadvantaged with everybody else in their division. It's all coming. Great point. Here, brother. Great point, Tim. Nobody had an advantage because everybody had to wait a little bit longer. Now, Tim, I'm not saying that it's not something we can look at it and improve for the 2023 Mr. Olympia. That's not what I'm saying. I'm recognizing that if we have a better time frame, the bodybuilders and all the competitors will come in a little bit later and will be better for everybody. And also, I heard people saying something some to cut you up. I also heard, you know, about the weather. It was cold. Guess what? When you go to Arnold Classic, it's cold as hell. Did I like being lean and getting ready for a show? No, it's not my favorite time of the year. But I did it anyway, and I did it 10 times. I can't tell you how many and, Arnold's I've been to where it was and, snowing. And yeah. you know what, Tim? It goes back to what Chris saying. When Chris was competing, these guys would do the Russian Grand Prix, the Finland Grand Prix, the German Grand Prix. They would be just competing and adapting to all different kinds of environments. Different food. Flying, trying to find food, sharing food. Yeah. Nowadays, some of these guys, they compete one time, okay? They want to make sure that they know exactly the time they go on stage. You know, they want a masseuse back there for their feet and somebody doing their nails. Brother, it's not going to happen, okay? Just like in the NFL, if there's an injury, the people are going to wait 30 minutes until that guy gets carted off the field. And you're going to have to stay warm and throw that ball again. The same thing happens in soccer. Am I saying that we can't improve on the timing? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you, as a professional athlete, you need to be ready for contingencies. And, you and the contingency is, you if, you, if the first call out takes three minutes, you need to be ready if you're on the second call out. If the first call out takes 15 minutes, you still need to be ready. And even when you go up there to compete, you go up there and you know you, you show yourself first. So you do your, th your 30, 30 sec or a minute routine. You have to wait till all these guys go up. So what are you gonna do between that time and where the time you're gonna go back out to, to uh, get the comparisons? You got to be ready for that. You don't know how long it's going to take. So here, here's another thing to throw at you guys. So you're talking about the technicality of moving the backstage of the stage wall forward or back to accommodate the backstage. But then you had some divisions, even though they did prejudge and only top 10 got to pose, whether it was men's open or some of the other ones when they did the confirmation round and you had 30 to 40 people. Classic physique, I think, had 38. Men's physique had over 40 around in there where you've got to have all those guys back to back on two diagonals you have enough to have enough stage space to even do the call outs so where's that happy medium with accommodate the people you know that are the tan corpses backstage on their yoga mats versus the people that are actually standing out there in their quarter turns Tim I, I, I have to say that I would have made the same choice I would have given the priority to the stage because Steve Weinberger is gonna have to do a call out where he has how many bodybuilders did we have 30, 37 37 30? so you split 18 guys 17 guys on either side you don't want that stage to look small crowded and ugly so my choice would be we are in an awesome venue let's compromise a little bit on the back to make sure the show looks great with that being said if we have a better time frame that when these competitors should be arriving right then it would be better for them because you would have less people backstage and that's something we are already working on it okay and we're gonna make it even better but let's look at the positive. We're on the strip. Planet Hollywood, Paris, amazing hotels. Better they food. were better than New Orleans. <laughs> better food. The <clears throat> venue was awesome. Record pay-per-view. I was talking, you know, I heard Jose Raymond on a podcast. He goes, man, I had the best seat in the house. That's what everybody was saying. You know, it cost a lot of money to be doing a show in that kind of venue, and it will never be perfect. It has never been perfect. This was not perfect, but it was freaking great. And also, people said on some podcasts they had to go outside and then back in you know some of these things can be worked on i'm sure in the future it won't be the same same mistakes happening but everything is being looked at and everything is being worked on we've got a few minutes and chris and i are uh, eager to find this out as the pros and the uh, amateurs that are trying to get into the pro ranks you talk about narrowing down the amount of people that will step on that olympia stage 
there's a new qualification system in place. Can you give us a quick insight into... There's no more point system. So before we had three uh, competitors that qualified for the point system, so we're not going to have that, you know. Um, which I think is great. Well, across I nine think divisions, that's 37 took, right off the bat. If you took fourth uh, 65 times third place, that doesn't mean you should be in the Olympia. Um, it's the harsh truth, but you want the best of the best. Another thing that people have taken in consideration is, because the show was in December, and people don't know this, people just go on the internet, say stupid stuff, they don't know that. You know, we had an agreement with the COVID Zappos too, right? during COVID. Okay, so the Zappos was supposed to happen in 2020. Now you still have an agreement that you have to fulfill. That's why we did the Zappos theater in 2022. Now you gotta find a date in 2022, which was not your original year. And then you push back to December. What happens in December? Six more, more qualifying weeks. More people qualify. Yeah. More people qualify. What are you gonna tell them? Are you gonna say, hey, listen, you wanna show in August 2022, but we're not gonna qualify you. You're gonna have to wait to 2022. 2023 that's not what you do you have a contingency plan you get a bigger stage you compromise in the backstage but you change you adapt the NFL does that all the time the Mr. Olympia is going to be doing that all the time we're going to be adapting changing and getting better not to mention you still got to roll over from other people renting the venue to where you don't have those splat those uh splat those splats slots where you can put in a competition in that time frame in that in that area and rent the venue it's 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 a challenge and i have a great deal of experience on the topic and i can confidently say that the people that were in charge they did their best with what they had it's 400 competitors it never happened are there things that we can do better i'm saying it right now absolutely there are things we can do better and we're working on it but understand that we're coming off of a COVID year contract to do it in 2022, a show that was done in December with 400 competitors, and boy, nobody had a bad seat in the house. Well, you know, it was everybody, I heard so much amazing feedback, like you said, from various rows and sides and middle, how amazing their view was inside the Zappos Theater, the pictures that we got, the video from the pay-per-view that showed how beautiful that stage was for every level of routine, every division of routine. Uh, we thank you all. The person I felt bad for, I'm just gonna touch on this real quick is the the uh, amazing woman who had to work on 400 flights and visas from around the world because we had competitors from 37 countries Man. so that was a challenge she's, she's an amazing woman you should baby tell us doll about. my wife your wife my wife baby Heather, doll. Heather, we see you, baby, baby doll. doll I'm buying you a nice furniture from restoration hardware because you deserve it I buy your bottle of wine Wow, uh, I got nothing. I'm, I'm come over and drink it on your furniture. All right. Uh, as always, thank you so much for joining us on Primetime Muscle. Like, subscribe, share, and always comment. Uh, and we enjoy having you around the world here, and we will see you next time.